To God be the glory. Great things he had done. Listen, our God is an amazing God. Our God is an awesome God. We just have to look around, you know, we don't even have to look too far to know that God is an awesome God. I thank God for you joining us today. And I want to remind somebody that this God that we proclaim and this God that we serve is worthy of our praise. My name is Trisha Beckles and I welcome you today to the voice of hope. I thank God today that he is raising up a people of rejoicing that we can know beyond knowing, beyond the shadow of a doubt, no matter what comes our way, we can make a boast in the Lord. And so I thank God for you and I thank God for what he's doing in your life. I thank God that you've chosen to join us today to know and to be reminded that no matter what is happening, you can put your hope in God. You can stand wherever you are and make a boast in the Lord. When sometimes the enemy thinks like he has you down, when you make that boast, the enemy almost doesn't even know what to do. He thought he could have boasted in Job. And he said, listen, God, you know, Job is only serving you because you have a hedge around him, but remove that hedge and you will see what will happen. He would curse you to your face. And even Job's wife said, look, curse God and die. But what did Job do in the midst of? Yes, he got down. Yes, he was weak for a while. But when he had that encounter with God, he was able to be in obedience before God because God said, listen, just pray for these people that are around you. And he did that. And listen, our God was able to multiply unto Job double for his trouble as we say. I'm saying to somebody that needed to be reminded of that today, that our God is a faithful God. Our God is a God that can deliver us. Our God is a God that stands with us regardless of what seems to be coming our way, regardless of what petition the enemy has before God. Because listen, nothing that comes our way, comes our way without God's permission. And I'm saying to us today, Put your whole trust in God. Make your boast in God. Know and understand that if God be for you, who can be against you? I'm excited today because I know that Almighty God rules and Almighty God reigns. And just as David said, he said, Soul, why art thou cast down within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. This, of course, is taken from Psalm chapter 42, verse 11, which this program is based on. Because in the midst of anything that life brings, we need to fix our gaze on God. And I'm saying to somebody today, when you fix your gaze on God, you will know and you will understand and you will see the glory of God being revealed in your life and in your situation. When you put your hope and you put your trust in God, you're able to stand where the world is looking to see you fall or to fall apart. You're able to stand and you're able to give God the glory because you know that God is standing with you. You know that God is walking with you. You know that God will see you through. And even more than that, you know that Almighty God has the final say. Shall we pray today? Almighty and eternal God, it is to you, God, that we give all glory. It is only to you that we give all the honor and all the praise. Lord, Father, dominion, power, majesty, and might, they all belong to you. And we exalt and we magnify and we glorify the name of Jesus Christ in this place. We glorify the name of Jesus Christ in our lives. And we say, Lord, you just have your way. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being such a present help, for being such a source of comfort, for being such a source of direction. We give you the glory there, Jesus, that we can have access to God through you. You said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so we thank you, O God, for giving us access to the throne room of God. 
where we can lay and we can cast every burden. We can receive strength. We can receive deliverance. Father, everything that we need is comprised and consisted in you. And so we just bless you today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We said great is our God and greatly to be praised. And so even as we gather today, Lord, even for this time where we can just come apart and be refreshed, we can just come apart and fix our gaze on you as we go about whatever you have in store for us today. We say, Lord, receive all the glory. I commit every life. I commit every person under the sound of my voice into your hands. And I thank you for the plans that you have for them. Father, you said, oh God, that many are all plans, but we commit our plans unto you today. And we say, Lord, you direct us. You take over. We say, God, you be glorified in the midst of it. We thank you for TIN today, God. And we declare your blessings upon this station, oh God. We thank you today, God, that every need is met. Every need is supplied. And we give you all praise, all honor, all glory. God, as we commit this time into your hands, I thank you for touching lives today and giving us the strength to stand in you, to know and understand that regardless of what comes our way, you will be our help, you will be our guide, and you will be our deliverer. And so, Lord, today I just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. As I say, have your way with us, and let only your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Truly, our God is a great God. I want to talk to us today, I, you know, I titled it simply Believing But, because in truth and in fact, and as I read this, it, it kind of stabbed me a little hard because, you know, when you think about how good God is, when you think about how awesome God is, you kind of wonder, but then the more you think about it, and we'll get into it pretty now, pretty now, pretty soon, the more you think about how good God is. Sometimes you wonder how come, and how come it's so hard for people not to surrender to God. But you don't judge because you understand that we were there at one point. And so thank God for his mercy and for his compassion and his love that he brought us, he drew us. As the song says, love lifted me, God's love brought me. John 3.16 reminds us that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as we look today, I just want us to think about maybe somebody you know that may be kind of wavering in their walk or whatever the case may be, and just pray for them and encourage them because God has so much in store for each and every one of us even as we are willing to yield ourselves to him. Amen? So let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 12, and we're going to read from verses 37 to 43. For this particular instance, I'm going to start by reading the NIV version, and the verses I'm going to touch on, of course, I usually use the King James Version. So either which way, you get the general gist of what we are going to be talking about. It says from verse 37 in the NIV version, like I said, even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet. Lord, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason, they could not believe, because as Isaiah says elsewhere, he has blinded their eyes and deadened their hearts, so they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Yet at the same time, Many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not confess their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. 
for they loved praise from men more than praise from God. And of course, I'm going to focus today on verses 42 to 43, which in the King James Version, which is more familiar, it says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. I told you, I, I mean, for as often as I've read through the Bible, reading this again, it really stabbed me because it's like, how can you love the praise of men more than you can love the praise of God? But the thing about it is, like I said, we don't, I don't want us to adopt a position of judgment because we, at some point in our lives, made choices that pleased men more than they pleased God. So we thank God for his grace and his mercy and his deliverance. But I'm saying to us today, as we look at these two verses especially, I'm asking us the question and I'm inviting us. We just came off talking about sin and, you know, after a fall, what it's like where we looked at what happened with David and where God says, listen, you caused me, my name to be blasphemed. And I'm saying as we look at these two verses, as we kind of take it apart a little bit, and we remember this is entitled Believing But, I'm asking us the question today, what does your belief cause you to do? What does your belief cause you to do? What does your belief look like to the world that is around you? And this world that is around you, your immediate sphere of influence, what does your belief look like to them? Where they are sitting observing you and learning more about this Jesus that you proclaim from the things that you say and do. What does your belief cause you to do? How are people around you being influenced as a result of how you demonstrate your belief? We understand that Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. And it says that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I can thank God because we live in a society where it doesn't cost us a whole lot to proclaim Jesus Christ. We still have the freedom to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ just about everywhere. And I'm saying this is something we cannot take for granted. But as we paint the picture of what is taking place in those two verses in John chapter 12, verses 42 to 43, and I'm going to read it again, because there's so much that we can look at and there's so much that mirrors our very lives that we can learn from and move on with God. Because it says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, and of course the NIV referred to them as the leaders, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And as we started reading from verse 37, we were told, and I mean, it's a fulfillment of the prophecy from Isaiah, where despite seeing the glory of Jesus Christ, the glory of God through what Jesus was able to do on earth, they still were not willing and able, in a sense, to believe. And I'm saying, yes, the verse and the prophecy said that you know, God basically hardened their hearts so that they could not believe despite what. And I read something, a, a devotional just a few weeks ago, where they were talking about, is it that God is hardening their heart and the soil condition of the heart? The thing about it is that I, God works with what we give to him, in a sense. Because if your heart is toward God. Sometimes we have a heart that is questioning more than anything else. 
So it's very easy to hear something that feeds into those doubts that you have and you go the way of unbelief. In the case of the Pharisees and the scribes, they sought to go about discrediting Jesus. They had a perception and even some of the children of Israel as well, had a perception as to what the Messiah would look like. And because Jesus did not come in that manner, they could not, and in a sense, they would not. They refused to believe that he is the Messiah. They refused to believe. And remember too, that they came from the place where they felt, okay, we are the chosen of God. We are God's people on earth. And I know of one particular uh, religion or denomination that talks about themselves as being God's people. But I'm not getting into that today. I'm saying because they thought of themselves as having a special privilege or special access to God and a perception of how the Messiah would be and what he would look like, they could not receive or they would not receive this Messiah in the way Jesus came. And even though Jesus confirmed who he was through signs and wonders and miracles, even the very things that Jesus was saying seemed to contradict to what they were doing. You see, because as human beings, sometimes if we don't yield ourselves to the Spirit of God, if we don't yield ourselves to the Word of God, it is very easy for us to make up doctrines and you know, decisions that go counter to it and hold on to them, hold fast to them as if they are the gospel. That is why sometimes when you listen to, you know, the different sayings, you know, God helps those who help themselves. And if you're not wise, you look for it in the Bible because it seems to be so nice. It is not scriptural. And so we need to be very, very careful. The Bible warns us as well that in the last days, we shall look for teachers. People who are not willing to believe will look for teachers that will tell them exactly what they think they want to hear. But I'm saying to us, it is not going to get you to heaven. Unless you yield to Almighty God, it is not going to get you to heaven. Allow the Spirit of God to lead you. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, but as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Not anybody who tells themselves they have special access or anything that causes men to be puffed up. And so we need to be very careful. So here was Jesus. He came to earth. He was born in a manger. He was, you know, he was, he rode on a donkey and he was all very humble. And he spoke about humility more than anything else. He did not seek, as it were, to be affirmed by men. He came to do the will of Almighty God. And we're going to talk in another episode about focusing on purpose. That was Jesus. He was focused on purpose and he did what he came to do. But in this case, he was challenged. And because he was challenged, even among the leaders, those whose hearts were a little more open to the possibility, they got to the place where they could not deny that Jesus was who he said he was. And so the verse tells us that many of them believed on him. And yet, what choice did they make? What choice did they make? They chose not to confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. They chose not to confess him for fear that they would be ostracized from their position of influence. They chose not to confess belief or faith in Jesus Christ because they feared being, you know, made one of the outcasts or losing the quote unquote perks or the titles that came with being a leader in a societal setup like that. And I have to smile even as I think about it. 
And I would dare say it because I know and understand that Almighty God is who I have to answer to. But I'm even saying among so many of our leaders, this is the same thing. Where you fall in love with the position and the influence and the power and you lose sight of the reason why God has you there in the first place. When God is the one that has raised you up and God raised you up for purpose. Some even name the name of Christ and still sometimes by their thoughts, their actions, their attitudes, you wonder if they remember that they are called by the name of Christ. I'm encouraging us as a people, as the body of Christ, to keep them in prayer because it's not easy and the things that come at them are tempting. So it's not easy, but the final decision is theirs. And with the help and with the strength of God, they too can stand and they too can see purpose fulfilled in their lives. Because at the end of the day, they too will have to give God an account for what they did with the call that he placed on their lives. So we get back to these chief rulers and the leaders who believed. They didn't think about believing. They came to a place where they believed and they knew that this Jesus was the Messiah. This Jesus was who he said he is. And they still chose not to confess him. And at the end of the day, the, the verse it says, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And even as we ask the question, what does your belief cause you to do? It is really an interesting question because it introduces then the whole dimension of grace, the whole dimension of God's grace, where we know and we understand that God is always ready and willing to forgive us because of his grace. We are told that in 1 John chapter 1, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible tells us that the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. But so many times, because of this dimension of grace, we take a stance or we take an attitude, we adopt an approach that tells us we can do what we want and God will forgive us. And the thing about it is, you know, they have, you have those people who, who just do just about anything. Yes, even in the body of Christ. And they will tell you, God knows my heart. God is the only one that can judge me. But I'm reminded about Romans chapter 6 in verses 1 to 2, where Paul asked, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And he emphatically said the answer right after. He says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And so I'm asking us the question again, what does your belief cause you to do? Yes, God's grace is sufficient. Yes, are you gonna deny God because God knows your heart? Are you gonna keep silent about the things of God because you are fearful of what people will say about you? Are you going to be hesitant to declare Jesus Christ wherever you go? because you are wondering about how people will look at you. I'm saying to you today, regardless of where God has you placed, do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed to declare Jesus Christ. In the midst of all the temptations, in the midst of all that life will bring before you, God has you where he has you, for a reason and it is up to you to allow the spirit of the living God to lead you in a particular way that the decisions that you make will be those that bring God glory will be those that allow God to be pleased with your life he tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6 he says trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct 
thy path. I'm reminding somebody today that the person that you see and you want that person to get saved so badly is somebody that is waiting probably to hear from you about this Jesus Christ that you talk about. This Jesus Christ that you say has saved you. This Jesus Christ that you say is Lord. How have you influenced that person? How have you encouraged that person to get to know Jesus? Or is it easier for you to stay silent and to pray and to just hope that somewhere along the line something happens and you can say, yes, God answers my prayer. But God is waiting on you to proclaim Jesus Christ. Not only to proclaim Jesus Christ, but to live Jesus Christ. So that the world that you live in, the sphere of influence that you operate in, can know the power of Almighty God through your stance, through your life, through your choices. That through it all they can know beyond knowing that this great God, Jehovah, who we proclaim, this Jesus Christ that we exalt, and we're coming to a season where we remember his birth. This Jesus Christ is worth getting to know. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to be that light that Jesus Christ has called you to be? Shall we pray today? Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, that it is still not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And God, even as you continue to show yourself strong on the behalf of your people, I pray that you will give us all the strength to stand. That God, your purposes for our lives and your purposes on this earth will be fulfilled. And only your name be glorified. We thank you even now in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Stand in God. He will see you through. Amen.